First one I got was body dysmorphia. Next one, 100% is speaking kindly to myself. Next is exercise addiction, struggling with binge eating, dedicating time to journaling every day, self-control, I'd be eating more than I should. Relatable. <laughs> What's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, hello, I'm Olivia. On my Instagram yesterday, I put up a little like question box and I asked, what would you say you struggle with the most when it comes to living your definition of a healthy lifestyle? And I got a bunch of different responses and then I kind of had the idea to just sit down and talk with you guys about it. And I really hope this video doesn't come off as like, too preachy or anything like that. I just really want to sit down and talk about these like real issues that you guys are struggling with, share my either experiences, my opinions on it, or what I do to help with all of these concepts, I guess. So I'm just gonna go right down the line. So the first one I got was body dysmorphia, and I got a lot of different ones with this. And this I completely understand is something that I feel like everyone struggles with, and I feel like it's personally my opinion. I don't really think it's ever something that's gonna completely gonna go away. I feel like it's always gonna be there, but something that I've done to try to help cope with that because in the beginning of my fitness journey I was so consumed with my physique and I actually just did a whole Instagram post about this I placed so much of like my identity and my self-worth and my value in my physique results from the gym and obviously body dysmorphia plays a really big role in that where you don't feel like your body is where you want it to be or you just see yourself in a skewed way. So what I've done to cope with that is I really have tried to separate like my goals in the gym and my identity and how I perceive myself. Like my goals and progress towards the gym, my physique, my body, all that stuff is business. It's nothing personal. It doesn't define who I am as a human being. It doesn't make me any lesser or any greater. So for me personally, overall, simply not identifying and placing my identity in my physique and in my goals and in my progress towards my goals in the gym has really allowed me to stop being so hard on myself because as soon as you take something personally such as your physique and by dysmorphia and you say oh wow this is fat this isn't big enough this isn't small enough and you identify with that and it comes accusing who you are as a human being as a person that's when I feel like it cuts deep that's where I feel like it really affects your psyche and your self-love and all of that so separating myself from it has allowed me to still feel a drive and a motivation and discipline to work towards my goals in the gym but without feeling so much self-hate or talking negatively to myself or getting down on myself because my body isn't necessarily where I want it to be. And like, as soon as I did that, like even now, yes, I look in the mirror and there's certain things that I want to be bigger, that I want to be smaller. I still have goals, but I just don't feel like it doesn't like affect my heart space, if that makes sense, because it's strictly business and I know it's nothing personal, if that makes sense. I don't know if that just made sense. <laughs> okay, next one, I also got this a couple of times, is struggling with binge eating. This, gonna be fully transparent, I have never really fully, like I never have been diagnosed with an eating disorder. It was never like a long-term thing that I've ever dealt with an eating disorder. I do feel like self proclaimed, I guess, that I definitely have gone through phases of eating disorder tendencies is what I'll call it. And for me, binge eating kind of happened when I was freshman year of college where I was so, so, so strict with my diet, like no joke, brown chicken, brown chicken, <laughs> grilled chicken, brown rice, steamed vegetables, like that sort of thing, like never ate anything that was deemed unhealthy, like I'm not even joking. The only time that I would binge is that I would have dark chocolate chips and almonds in my dorm room, and I just vividly remember one night I kept eating and eating and eating and eating them, and I literally like couldn't stop. And what I will say what helped me with this is not feeling like there is a scarcity when it comes to food. I feel like even now, if I even have that thought of being like, wow, I just wanna keep eating and eating and eating this, I always think like the food isn't going anywhere and I think that was a really big thing that like switched a switch switched a switch for me in my brain just with junk food in general I used to think like that was my only opportunity to eat it so if I don't eat it now I don't know when I'm gonna get it next because I'm gonna need to be on track and just the thought of me being like, you know what? Actually, I can have this whenever I want. If I really still am dying to have this tomorrow, I can drive to the store and go buy more. That kind of concept and perspective of thinking it's always gonna be there, or and I can go get it literally whenever I wanted to, eliminated that scarcity factor for me. Maybe be like, okay, I don't need to eat it all now because I can get it tomorrow. And the catch is always the next day, I really would like, I can't think of a time where then the next day, 
proceeded to go buy it from the store because then by the next day it just was gone like it's just so much of relationship with food is such like a psychological thing and that's why it's i am so into your mindset and things like that and value that because it really does play a huge role when it comes to fitness whether that being pushing yourself in the gym or knowing how to create boundaries with food okay next one 100 percent is speaking kindly to myself i got a couple of those too self-talk actually was just talking to my sister about this yesterday i feel like there's either negative cycler thoughts or positive cycler thoughts of thoughts and it's up to you to switch from that negative cycle to hop into that positive cycle. The thing is, is that your thoughts are habits. They are habitually learned patterns. So just like forming any new habit, you need to do the same when it comes to your thought processes. And a lot of people overlook this concept because they just don't think it's true, but it is. If you're having constant negative thoughts about yourself in your brain, that is something that you, whether you realize it or not, consciously or unconsciously, have developed a pattern and a habit for. So what I do and what I told my sister yesterday, like if you have a negative thought in your brain, like it was up, the first step is having awareness of that thought and not again, kind of what I talked about with body dysmorphia and your goals there's no need to identify with the thought a thought is a thought it doesn't identify or define who you are as a human being that thought isn't an absolute truth it's not the truth it's just a thought and it's up to you to define and declare what you deem as truthful if that makes sense so for example if i'm looking in the mirror thought comes into my head you look fat today it's all relative, it's all subjective of what is what is fat, all that stuff, what, what's deemed as attractive, what's deemed as unattractive. So first step is having that awareness of saying, whoa, I just thought a negative thought about myself. And as soon as you have that awareness, that's when you come into the present moment and are able to actually decipher your thought. And I always picture there's as two lanes. You can keep going in that negative mindset and keep that momentum for the day, or you can switch it and go into the positive avenue and have that momentum take you through the day. Like I said, once you have that awareness of like, whoa, I'm stepping into my consciousness I just had a negative thought now it's up to you to make the effort to make the change and change the thought that you have about yourself and I'm not kidding I literally will do this if sometimes especially if it's in the morning because my morning really sets a tone for the day if I wake up and for some reason I look in the mirror I'm like oh my gosh that pimple's ugly or that looks gross blah, blah, blah. I literally will be like come into awareness recognize what you just said that was a negative comment that's not true, speak kindly to yourself and I'll switch what I say to myself right then and there. People think that mental things, since you like can't see it, it's not, you don't exercise it the same way. You exercise your thoughts and brains the same way that you go into exercise in the gym. And that's just the truth. Also, I hope all these make sense. I feel like my brain works really weirdly, but it like makes a lot of sense in my head. But sometimes it's hard for me to put into words. Next is exercise addiction. Now, I was also talking with a girl about this via DM who was struggling with HA and she was saying how she feels guilty if she doesn't work out a lot and I feel like that's what people with exercise addiction kind of struggle with as well as like you feel guilty by not going to work out but the thing is is like too much of anything is an issue right so I try to think of it as as with anything you know if you don't exercise enough I would feel guilty right because I know that's doing my body an injustice and I know that I'm not giving my body the movement that it needs but on the contrary if you're doing too much exercise that's also an injustice to your body because it's an overkill for your body you're overworking your body and you're tiring your body out I kind of think of it as like if I had this is gonna sound weird but like if I had a loved one if I just was overworking overworking running them into the ground I would feel awful I wouldn't want to overwork them you know what I mean I'd want to work them to a point where it's healthy for them and it's just for them but I wouldn't want to overdo or underdo it and that's the same thing when everything goes back to self-love if you love yourself as if you would love a loved one you wouldn't want to push your body way past its limits to the point of depreciating itself essentially or too little and being lazy and then another one was dedicating time to journaling every day I totally feel this first of all I also want to like obviously fully transparent. I don't journal every single solitary day. I personally probably do it like anywhere from four to six days a week, but it just kind of depends on if like I really need it for the day or how busy my morning is. What has helped me is to just place it in my routine. So it's literally in my morning routine, just like you brush your teeth every morning. After I do that, I always go and try to journal. So that's something that really helps it be consistent in my routine is just placing, it's called habit stacking. But another thing that has helped me a lot is especially with school starting, I haven't had as much time in the mornings to journal. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll just go back and read my affirmations out loud, or I'll go back and read my previous like gratitude list out loud, or it's just a lot quicker and it just saves a lot of time, but it still allows me to like align my mindset and my feelings for the day. Okay, next one is staying away from snacking. Now, another misconception I feel like is that people think snacking is bad. Snacking in general is not bad. I have like two snacks every single day, one between breakfast and lunch and one between lunch and dinner. If I didn't have snacks throughout the day, I would 
go crazy. Stacking only becomes a problem when you aren't aware of the portion or you just keep grazing and grazing and grazing and then you end up overeating in calories. Because I feel like there is a difference between snacking and having a snack. You know what I mean? Like snacking is grazing when you're just like eating out of the chip bag or just whatever. So with this, I would say to have a definitive snack like portion out and sit down like you were to eat a meal. Because I feel like when I do that, my calories are so much more controlled. I'm able to like register when I'm full. Next is self-control. I'd be eating more than I should. Relatable. And I feel like this, I would give the same advice for what I just said with the snacking, especially like kettle corn. You guys, I could eat the whole damn bag. So what I do is I always will try to portion it out. So I'll pour it into a bowl. And even if, I'm not saying you pour the bowl and that's the only thing you can have. If you want more, sure, pour another bowl. But that concept of having to go get the bag, pour it again, just makes you more aware of how much you are actually consuming instead of mindlessly just eating forever. Or I'll literally just put the whole bag away just because it'll be like the out of sight, out of mind thing. And again, if I'm like, oh, I really want more, I will have to consciously get up, go to the pantry, open up the bag, and I just am more aware of how much I'm consuming. Next, balance with food. I feel this. I have a sweet treat almost every single day. Sometimes I'm like really full after dinner, so I'm like, I don't have room for this. But other than that, I have Oreo things every single night. I feel like everyone's definition of balance is different. And I feel really strongly about that. And I personally feel like it takes everybody experimenting to find where that line of balance is for them. And I think a big thing that has helped me with finding balance with food is how I view food in general. I think really taking off the titles of what is a good food, what is a bad food, has allowed me to kind of simply just eat without feeling like I'm doing something wrong. This kind of relates to having balance with food. And a lot of people say like feeling like they're off limit foods and feeling out of control around junk food and just like fear foods and all that stuff. So I completely understand this. I used to struggle with feeling like they were off limit foods. I was scared to eat certain foods because I thought they were gonna make me gain weight, the whole nine yards. And once I kind of removed the label that there are good and bad foods, unhealthy and unhealthy foods, and just viewed it more as nutritious versus less nutritious foods, that has completely taken the pressure off of my eating and how I view foods. This is why it's insane because it's just such a mental game with your perspective on food. Like literally as soon as I felt like there wasn't a scarcity component or there wasn't an off limit component, it took away any sort of irrational wanting or craving for these certain things. It was like, I can have them whenever I want. It's not off limits. And what I've learned over the years is that it's not really about what you eat that's gonna make you gain weight. It's your caloric intake over the whole total of the day. So as this is my thing, as long as you're Honoring your hunger cues, you're gonna stay somewhere within that maintenance level calorie range for your body for the day. If you're just honoring your hunger cues and cravings throughout the day of, okay, still making healthy choices for your meals, for your snacks, but then when you want something sweet, just have a serving of that something sweet in moderation, you're still gonna fall in that caloric window and it, there's not gonna be any sort of penalization, I guess, if you will, for eating that food. If anything, it's gonna fulfill that craving, it's gonna get, put your mind at ease and you're gonna feel more satiated. Next is hunger cues, someone also said struggling to know when I am full. This I don't feel completely qualified to speak on, but I do know that sometimes hunger cues can take a little bit to develop, especially if they have been ignored in the past. I will say sometimes, especially if you're under eating, your hunger cues will be more suppressed. So I do find that slowly increasing your caloric intake over time will allow you to have those hunger cues come back. And when it comes to struggling to know when I am full, a big thing that helps me with this is a, making sure I'm properly hydrated throughout the day because find when I'm dehydrated, I'm just like constantly snacking. I'm just never satiated no matter what I really eat. So I make sure that I'm hydrated. And with that, I'll try to drink a glass of water either like before or after the meal. That helps me feel way more satiated. Or also when I eat more slowly, I'm really able to like slow down and register when my hunger cues kind of click in to tell me that I am full. Eating out of emotion. We have food has always been like a comforting thing to me and I can't seem to get away from that. And someone else said comfort food. Now, I I feel like with comfort food, this can mean a couple different things. Comfort food can be like when you're upset, when you're feeling down in the dumps or stressed or something, you turn to food to eat. Or comfort food to me can mean like, it's a comforting thing. Like sometimes when you come home from a long work day, you just want a big bowl of mac and cheese and that's just what's gonna make you feel happy. I think there's two separate things here, but if you turn to comfort food out of like stress, anxiety, or you're sad, I feel like my advice with this, I personally haven't struggled with this, but my advice with this would be to turn to other outlets to try to come into a more aligned 
find headspace so that you don't need to turn to food to try to fill that void because kind of like what I said previously in the video nothing external can fulfill you internally so I think just doing the internal work and finding different stress techniques like for me that's journaling that's meditating that's going for walks that's exercising just finding different emotional and mental outlets to clear your mind and then if it's something if it's a comfort food in terms of like it's like after a long work day on a Friday you want a bowl of soup or mac and cheese or something like that I guess I would say to try to find like a healthier alternative I guess so you can still have your comfort food but in a healthier way or like I always say eat it in moderation you know what I mean like make a normal meal that's going to satiate you that's going to make you feel fuller but then you can also have your little bowl of that comfort food all right I feel like we talked about a lot of different topics in that video and a lot of important ones I really hope that was helpful even just to chat about it and I hope my advice made sense sometimes I found like it's hard for me to explain but I do really want to talk about these things yeah I hope this was helpful if you enjoyed it in any way please definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel I'm sending you so much love and hopefully I'll see you in the next one